Three minutes, 17 seconds to go. It is second and 15 for the Monarchs. Abendindio goes deep. Oh. There's a flag down, and this could be costly for the Lancers, as it looks like it's going to be either a hold or interference, depending on when the penalty took place. This could be an interference call. Yeah. It is interference. Casey McGuire flawless on those penalties deep down the field. What happened was on the, there you see it, the defensive pass interference going to get called on the Lancers, 18 Kelly Jimenez. Once he turned around to look for the ball, he put both hands actually on number nine, Dan Dresman. And once you do that, even if you don't slow down Dresman, the referee sees both hands on the offensive player. He's going to call that no matter the situation of the game. And right now that is a huge penalty. The penalties have cost St. Francis today, and it looks like it's going to do it again as this game starts to wind down. Automatic first down. Still 3-11 to go. Or down to 3-11 to go. I always feel for the line judges because they always have to go stand by the by the benches of the teams that a call has just been made against, and they didn't make the call, but they're going to hear about it, of course. So I feel for them. Give up the middle to Josh Jennings. Picks up maybe a couple. Lancers are going to have to burn another timeout. Clock stops. Timeout St. Francis, 3.07 to go. The Lancers, I believe, will have one timeout remaining, Casey. I believe that is correct. And the Monarchs, not to beat a dead horse, but hoping beyond hope to break the stranglehold the Lancers have had on them for 24 years. You know, if you're Archbishop Mitty, you come into this game, you haven't beaten St. Francis, as Paul has said many times, in a long while, and if they... They can hold on and win this thing. you got to believe, Paul, that Mitty is probably coming into the WCAO play, probably the favorite, but coming out of this game against St. Francis has to be considered the team to beat in the WCAL. They've looked very good in this game so far. They look very good against Oak Grove, number two ranked team in the Bay Area. And If you're a Mitty Monarch fan or anybody associated with the football program at Archbishop Mitty, you have to be happy with the effort put forth two of the last three weeks. Last week they had a bye. So. Well, and the last time they beat St. Francis back there in 1976, that's the last time the Monarchs won the WCAL title. Out to Sean, a toss and a swarming defense again by the Lancers. There's no gain. It'll be third down and the Lancers will take their final time out. 3-0-1 to go in the ball game. Dillingham will have to be up to date on their two minute drill. Yeah, you figure Paul with when this timeout is finished, you mentioned there's 301 left to go. They're going to get the ball's going to be put in play but on for, for third down and they're going to get about 25 seconds you mentioned for the next play. So the Lancers going to get the ball back with about I say about 215 between 2 minutes left to go and as you mentioned that's going to be perfect time. It's a lot of time if you're St. Francis but it's not a huge amount of time if you don't have any timeouts left. Well, and where the ball is located, I wouldn't be surprised if Archbishop Mitty decided to take a delay of game penalty after the third down mm -hmm. play and back it up five yards because where you are in the field and the way Sean Epidendio has been punting, that five yards is not going to make a big difference and actually might even give him a little more room to pooch it down there inside the 20 someplace. So i got to give Epidendio all the credit in the world this game. He's looked unbelievable. He scored the go-ahead touchdown for Mitty so far. You mentioned his kicking ability has been great, pinning the Lancers as deep as possible. He's led the Monarch offense, so the senior for Archbishop Mitty quarterback has definitely been the leader on the team today, and he's shown why he's one of the more powerful quarterbacks in not only the WCAL but the entire CCS. Okay. Toss out to Sean. He's in trouble getting about to be swarmed and is swarmed under by the Lancer defense. It'll be fourth down right at midfield. 251, 250 to go here in the fourth quarter. The Lancers cannot stop the clock. The Monarchs in absolutely no hurry. Yeah, I wouldn't be surprised, Paul. They probably are going to take that delay of game penalty. Nowhere close to getting on the ball. I think they've just told them that it's no big deal. Maybe they take the delay of game. Two and a half to go. We're under two and a half. 227, 14 to 7. 
the Archbishop Mini Monarchs in the lead, and Epidendio actually coming out, probably telling them to call timeout when there's a second to go. They may take a timeout, and they do. Before they get the delay a game call, 2.13 to go in this ball game. And as we have pointed out, Dillingham will have to put together a minor miracle here for the Lancers to come back on this one, Casey. Hey, you got Ribeiro and Fernandez deep for the Lancers. They're two speedsters, but right now they're going to be jacked up to hopefully get a big return. you got to make sure that... The first and probably most important thing to do on a punt, and I would assume this is the most important thing, would be to catch the ball. Yeah, it's always important. So you don't want to take off running before you have the pigskin and hang out and see if the Lancer defense or the Lancer special teams can give you some blocks downfield. They've got three men deep now for the Lancers. They definitely want to return. They're going to cover the whole field. They'll have three men playing back to make sure they get some sort of a return. It's like they've added Dustin Hahn to Fernandez and Ribeiro. So they don't want the Monarchs to pooch it out of bounds. They want a return. Epidendio back to punt. The snap, it's high, he comes down with it. Pumps it down the middle. And uh, <laughs> Fernandez starts to call perhaps for a fair catch and lets it drop, and it drops down and is brought in on the 16 yard line a bit of indecision there as you mentioned Paul Fernandez if you're undecided about what you're going to do you don't ever want to call for a fair catch in that situation because you always could pick up the ball maybe take off if you see a hole but if you call for a fair catch and pick up the ball then you're done anyway so well and you want to get away from the ball exactly. too in, takes, <laughs> in case it takes a bad hop into your shins and then it's a live ball 205 to go as the Mini Monarch crowd begins to rise to its feet in anticipation, Dillingham quickly looking to the sideline, out of bounds to Fernandez. Pickup of about eight. Only four seconds for pickup eight yards. Nice job by the Lancers. Well, if Dillingham can get hot, he's got some good receivers. No two minute, no two minute warning in high school football, also, Paul, we should mention. They cannot stop the clock. It's that simple. <laughs> there, there will be no stoppage. If, if they go deep down the middle, they're going to have to hustle down on the ball. Perhaps go for the spike. The only way they can stop it is with a spike. And to get out of bounds, of course. Dillingham from the shotgun over the middle dropped by Benjamin. Not the worst thing in the world. He only picked up, well, would have been a first down, but he only picked up about three yards, so... Stops the clock. They don't need to spike it. Wastes about, as I mentioned, another four or five seconds that time. Third and three. As you pointed out, Casey, that Dillingham has had his difficulties going deep tonight. He's been fairly effective on the short patterns, and this is a time when you would like to complete a deep pass. Dillingham looks again to the sideline. Caught by Hahn. He's brought down. Incomplete. I'm sorry, dropped. I was shielded there by the Monarchs. It'll be fourth down, and this is absolutely it for the St. Francis Lancers. They have to go ahead and get a first down here where the Monarchs can run out the clock and end the drought that has gone on for, oh, so long, and the crowd in unison rises to its feet. The sidelines imploring their fans to cheer louder. Dillingham to pass in trouble. Scrambles. He's got room. He's got the first down. He's brought down at about the 34-yard line. Didn't have the chance to get out of bounds. They're going to stop the clock to move the chains. I don't. One forty-six to go. He had a clear shot out of bounds. He could have had the first down by plenty, but he decided to turn back upfield. Only picked up about another yard after he turned upfield. Probably hope beyond hope to maybe bust a big one. First and ten. A minute forty to go. Dillingham from the shotgun. He's got time, throws to the sideline, almost picked off, almost caught, which would have been a tremendous catch by number 20, Matt Vinoli. Dillingham was rushed at the end as a good pass rush was coming in by the Monarchs. See the replay. Nice block that time by the Lancer defense. And as you mentioned, Paul, that was almost intercepted and almost caught by the Lancers. 134 to go, fourth quarter, second and 10. 
as Dillingham will once again bring the Lancers to the line of scrimmage from the shotgun. He's got time. He looks high and deep down the middle. No flags as intended receiver Dustin Hahn. Good defense there by number four Wendell Jones. He was out in front of Hahn and just started slowing up enough that caused Hahn to slow up. Yeah, Dillingham, as we mentioned, Paul's inability to throw deep so far today. He's really just misread the speed of his various receivers. That time he had Hahn slower than Fernandez, and he still overthrew him. He's had Fernandez before overthrew him. He's really thrown to where he thinks they might be other than what they can get to. So. Minute 28 to go. Dillingham from the shotgun, third and 10. He's swarmed under. He may have fallen. No, he hung on to the ball. Fourth down. Fourth down and a lot of yards to go. Fourth down, minute 16. Can't spike the football. Fourth Clock down. is running, 114. Got to hurry. A little bit of confusion on the part of the Lancers. Dillingham trying to get a play. A very quick huddle. The receivers know what the play is. One minute to go. Fourth and 20. Dillingham to pass. He's got time. Looking for room. Looking for a receiver. Just throwing it towards the sideline. That's going nowhere. And the Mini Monarchs are on the verge of ending a 24-year drought against the St. Francis Lancers. They hold the lead 14 to seven. There are 49 seconds to go in the fourth quarter. The Lancers cannot stop the clock. Mitty just has to fall on the ball. Really plain and simple, Paul, just bad execution all night by St. Francis. They've had opportunities that have been squandered by penalties. You gotta tip your hat to Mitty. Their defense and offense have been unbelievable today. The offense struggled a bit in the first half, got a big touchdown to end that first half, but. The defense from the Monarchs, just unbelievable. The Lancers haven't been able to solve anything that Archbishop Mitty has put forward. Epidendio just takes a knee. The Lancers try to swarm in and cause a fumble, and some words are exchanged, but the Monarchs realize that they have this game in the bag. The ball has not been blown into play yet. Still has not been blown in. They, they will have to run one more play, I believe, though. 20 seconds to go. This should be the final play of the game. Pedendio takes a knee again, and that'll do it. The mini Monarchs have come to St. Francis High School on a mission. They have completed that mission. 24 years waiting for a victory. Their prayers have been answered as the clock runs out. The Archbishop Mini Monarchs 1-0 in WCAL action. The St. Francis Lancers fall to 0-1 in WCAL play. 0-6 on the year. As Mike Mitchell and Dave Brown shake hands at midfield, teams exchange handshakes, and the Mini crowd revels in the glory of a victory. It took them into the next century to beat the Lancers. But in that new century, they come up the winners. Casey, good ball game. It was a very good ball game. St. Francis and Mitty went toe to toe, both powerhouses in the WCAL. And Archbishop Mitty proved that maybe this year they have the Lancers number. Maybe this year they have the number that's going to take them all the way to the WCAL championship. As we pointed out earlier, 24 years ago, the last time they beat St. Francis, and when they did, they went on to win that WCAL title. And that's what the Monarchs are hoping for now as they gather at their bench to enjoy the victory with their student body. For all of us here at KMVT, for our producer director, Lazarus Sargent Eatings, I am Paul Cunningham along with Casey McGuire. We'll see you next time.